They made a choice and they picked up the gun. They have no rights as a human, period. We're talking about planning these people's death minute by minute. They're the ones. Minute, minute by minute. But they planned it. We're not. not. The healing has to come from within. It has to let go of that need for satisfaction. Because in truth, um, death is utterly irrevocable. And there's no way that that loved one can ever be restored to us. And for me, you could kill somebody for the rest of my life every single day. And that would never make up to me the loss of my little girl or restore her to my arms. So I don't even want to begin to buy into that lie. I have been working with murder victim families for over 20 years. And I see that those people who retain a vindictive mindset, however justified they feel, that they, in fact, give the offender another victim. I saw it happen in my own family. Hatred is simply not healthy. Our God and God of all peoples everywhere, grant us fortitude to speak up for unpopular causes, to fight for what is right, to seek peace in a world at war. Today, dear God, we ask your special blessing on Sister Helen Prejean, on her exceptional work and on all who walk with her. I got involved in the death penalty. The simple, direct answer to that is because I got involved in the lives of poor people. And there is a direct connection. This man that I wrote letters to and he wrote back, and I wrote and he wrote back. Even in the letters, I could see, look, here is a human being. I could tell his goodness. He never asked me for anything. And I had been warned, why, you know those death row inmates? You know, sister, he's just interested in conning you out of a little money for cigarettes. You don't think that man's really interested in some kind of spiritual relationship with a nun, do you? And when I think that I'm with him before he's executed and an hour before he dies, all he could say to me was, thank you, Sister Helen, for loving me. And I remember walking out of the execution chamber that night. It was as clear as a tinkling bell in my mind, the awareness and the mission. Because when you witness an execution, it either paralyzes you or it galvanizes you. And when we get galvanized, that's resurrection, that's faith, that's grace. There is a man on death row in Louisiana, Dobie Williams, whom the state is going to kill on June the 18th. And I have been accompanying him for over seven years. And now he has nine more days to live. That's the only reason I have to leave, because I wanted to be here the whole time for the journey. I so believe in what the journey does. God of life and of love and of compassion, may we be a sign of hope to our country that there is another way. What we're doing here, we may see as a little trickle of water, barely discernible, going through a lot of desert. But little trickles of water have a way of growing and becoming streams and becoming torrents and becoming rivers. And that's what we're about. And I love being part of this because every now and then we really just got to do something with our bodies. We got to stand up. We got to be public. We got to just say, no, not in my name. The death penalty is an act of tremendous despair for our society. We saw it, the whole nation saw it with Carla Faye Tucker. Is there not any alternative of what we can do as a people other than imitating the violence, imitating the violence, freeze framing people in the worst act of their life and imitating their violence? Isn't there any alternative of what we can do as a society? I've accompanied four human beings to execution, four, to be there in this clean place. A death house is so confusing because it is so clean. We even put alcohol on the person's arm before we inject the needle to kill them. You can't get any cleaner than that with death. The, the dinner says start there and come right on through. It's a buffet stuff. 
there's the passion of our ideals and the work and the commitment that we bring to it that binds us together. And then there's the shared experiences of the speaking and the gatherings and the events. And, and the eating together and the, the sleeping together and the cleaning up the messes together. It, there's a binding quality to that. It's a way of creating family in a very uh, short time. Breakfast starts at 8.30 because we have to have every piece of trash, every piece of clothing, every piece of baggage out of this building you know, our sleeping rooms, this area, and out here by 8.30. Myself and Otto are collecting stories for the fun night, which is next Saturday. So if anybody has any funny stories about anything that's happened on this journey, come to myself or Otto and don't tell anybody else. In conjunction with fun night, um, you need to know that the campus we're going to be on is a secured campus. It is guarded, but also it's a dry campus. No booze. And, and we gotta, especially smokers, please police our butts. Um, <laughs> I beg your pardon! <laughs> okay, I think, I think. <laughs> Scary thing to go against the majority. But if they see this little band, this little ragtag band of people who have given up a lot to march for something they believe, maybe people will say, you know what? I want to stand with them. Thank you. We are brothers and sisters in the human family, uh, brothers and sisters in the family of God. And, and it's precisely that conviction that, that leads us into the work that we're doing, that those people who have uh, done these terribly violent acts are still part of the family and deserve the dignity and the sense of worth that we all have. The focus should be on restoration, and that includes stopping the killing. You can't restore something that you kill.